Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 68. It's another week for us Manchester United fans. It's been a good week for Manchester United regarding last week. Two wins in a bounce, new era, new dawn, and I'm feeling good. For those who are tuned in, as always, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and also remember to share because sharing I boring spices caring. Those who are tuning in onto the Facebook, remember you can always smash that like button, share across all the social media platforms, get your friends to join the group as well. And for those who are watching on Twitch, make sure you smash that follow button. YouTube gang, you know what it is. Smash, subscribe, as always. And those who want to contribute to the channel, you can always contribute to the channel by clicking the link in the description for your PayPal. Click the link and also via Super Chat as well on YouTube while we're live. But it is what it is, what we're here for. We're here to discuss Manchester United as Manchester United have won two games in a row, beating Arsenal. I'm sorry, beating Arsenal. Let me get that right. Three goals to two, and also beating beating Crystal Palace, Crystal Paris, as I used to call it with the Apple Tower. One goal to nil. Great start for Ralph Ragnick. As always, the guys are here. The guys are here. Let me introduce you to my co-host. Amok, big up to you, my friend, man. I know it's it's been a while since since the last time we've seen each other. You get me. But man, how's your week been? How's the weekend in general, man? How's everything? How's life? Not life, good. I think this has been one of my greatest weekend as a football fan. Just because I saw something that got me excited. Not just because of change of manager. It's just a change of system that actually got me excited. And just see how it made it look so easy. I'm still celebrating, though. So good weekend. Big up to Manchester, though. Yes, and then of course, let me introduce you to Ems. Ems, big up to you, Esmond. How's it been, my brother? Bro, well, it's a little change of order. I normally, I normally last. Hey, <laughs> up in the world. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been good, man. I mean, can't complain, innit? You know what I mean? It's been a good week. Got um, four good results, last four games, so. Yeah, but other than that, yeah, man. But I know the weather's been terrible, but thank God I'm at home. But other than that, yeah, it's been good, man. Yes, and next, my second co-host, Jex. Big up to you, Jex. It's been a while, man. It's been about two, three episodes, you know. It's been a minute. But how you been? How was your weekend? How's how's it been since the whole situation? Oli, but in general, how you been, though? Oli, who's that, bro? Who's Oli? Oh, sorry, yeah. We don't know who that um, is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, man. I'm good. All blessed on this side. Obviously, being a United fan, we're unbeaten since the previous regime. So, all good, man. Can't complain. And, of course, let me bring up Munzi. Munzi, just on his show, guys. Make sure you tune in to Munzi Talks. He's just done his Premier League show. Make sure you subscribe and smash that love. Black button. But Bunzi, how you been? It's a new week for Manchester United, a new dawn. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Especially after that Arsenal result. I didn't care how we played. As long as we beat them gooners, shut them gooners up. Do you know what I mean? That wowed me up, them gooners. But yeah, oh yeah, yesterday was brilliant on it. Just watching it to see how so much different the day makes. Do you know what I mean? They say 24 little hours. It was just brilliant on it. Definitely was brilliant. And last but not least, Jerome, who wasn't here last week, but he's back again to show his face. Jerome, how have you been? How's your weekend in general? How's your mood? You know, because I'm sure your mood is lifted now. Yeah, definitely. I'm feeling very optimistic now, thanks. Yeah, weekend was blessed. Good to see United finally win back-to-back -back league games. See, I couldn't make it last week. I'm tired of working that. Working, working in the office. It takes its toll when you when you got trouble far and that, but yeah, back now. Uh yeah, looking forward to the games ahead now under this new management. Big up those who are tuning, big up to now Kane who's tuned in. He says thoughts on the United drawn Villa at home in the FA Cup and Man City getting swing in town. Um my thoughts on Man United getting Villa, it's gonna be an interesting game, of course, against Gerard. 
Man City gets into winning town. Man City always getting the easy teams in the FA Cup until they get to the semis and end up winning it. That's my opinion. But guys, guys, as always, let's get straight into it. Let's get top 10. First of all, let's talk about this Arsenal win. First of all, it was Manchester United 3, Arsenal 2. Before then, guys, as you guys are tuning, we will talk about that Palace game because that's the main feature. But let's get the Arsenal out the way. You get me? Manchester United are three, Arsenal two. Manchester United beating Arsenal the first time in the Premier League for, I believe, two years, which was wonderful for us to get the results, to get the bragging rights as well. But I want to start it off with you. And, Mook, let me get your thoughts, and then everyone else can get their thoughts, man. What was your thoughts on Arsenal's, I mean, Manchester United's victory against Arsenal? You just said that since watching us beat Arsenal, it's been a while. More in the Premier League, but for me it's a good start because the way we lost to Man City and Liverpool, coming to face Chelsea and we drew against Chelsea, and then beat Arsenal. Like 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 um, Jerome said, as Manchester United fans, we gotta be optimistic. I felt good. I know the performance and what we really wanted, ex expecting. But obviously, it's changing for James, so the performance, the boys can get away with it. But just having that that strength, that manpower to go for the kill. And don't like because the Arsenal goal was a bit beaky, that's a turn off. But for them to see how they, they came back from that, that's good. Now, like, as Manchester fans, you gotta be optimistic right now because it's looking good. So, big up to the players though, and the new regime as well. Of course, and what, what was your thoughts? The, the guys, what was your thoughts? Who wants to go next on that game? Because I, I, I'm happy with the result against Arsenal. Um, the way Manchester United started in that first half. Of course, Arsenal was all over us. But in, regarding the goal, some say that David De Gea should have been a man about it. Um, I don't know what you guys think of it, but I want to know what your guys' thoughts on. So whoever wants to go first, let go ahead. What was your thoughts on David De Gea's situation as the goal went in? Should it, should he have been a man or was it's not his fault? It could happen to anyone. I mean, he should have been a man. He should have been a but, man. Yeah, we said that, but... He was he's, he was facing his own goal. Like for me, as a goalkeeper, if anything, even if your leg's broken, at least face, <laughs> face the block. So at least like if you're on the floor, maybe you can stretch an arm out or something, you know? Like for me, he should have done more, and it was definitely a goal. It was definitely a goal for me. It was an unfortunate circumstance, but the way the hair got up and ran to the referee, that shows me he wasn't that hurt, you know. I tell you, I tell you what, if we lost that game. Then the whole media, the pundits, everyone would have been onto the gear. Because to be honest, that was disgraceful that he was laying around on the floor. That Fred hardly stepped, Fred, Fred hardly like, touched him. But like, bro, because of the time of the pitch, people might accidentally trod on you and stuff like that. But it didn't justify him being on the floor for that long while play was still going on. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I mean, Jerome, Jerome, let's consider the, rev, the fact that it was cold. I was going to say stepped that. stepped on his toe. Exactly. That hurts. Cold, that but, hurts. Could you imagine him being here for this? I'm not, I'm not, I don't blame him here for that. Here for that. I'm I'm it's a goal. I'm it's a goal. I'm I'm it's a better, sick. but I don't blame him I'm for that. Nah, it's cold. Nah, no, it's cold. it is cold. He's been on the floor for ages. Someone nah, stepped on your toes. It's cold. You know what? He didn't even know what was going on. Playing was still happening. Oh, At least oh, like you can see that play still happening. Oh. No, Fred actually touched him. Fred literally touched him. Yeah, he touched him. But he touched him, and that was hard. That was painful. Nah, I'm, not, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. Oh, I'm not having that. Wait a minute, Sunday morning. Like. No, but everyone's pain threshold is different, though. I cannot sit here and say, oh, that looked like there was nothing. But even I'm not be painful, I don't know. It's like certain man can't take needles, needles blood. Like, <laughs> it's it's true. Floor for two, it's true. Two long. And when when the referee gave the goal, he was all complaining like he never got hurt. No, because he thought, yeah, because he was He's down as, a, as, a, as the keeper, the ref should have stopped the game and come look to him, which I believe he should have done for him. But obviously, the ref got the last hand. So no. we, that's an L that we got to take as United. But don't really blame the hair for that. Because they stepped on his toes, and that that no, day was no, cold. No, I'm not having that. No, it was cold. If it's, if it's, your, if it's your own player, <laughs> yes, it's your own player. Because no, we didn't even know if it was your own player. You know, what was he expecting? 
The ref to give a foul. No, he fought, he no but it, it, you see, no, you, you, no, you no, see, no. he went. I understand. Like I said, I understand. It's not the same situation as when player bang the heads and stuff. But he got injured by his own player, which I believe football, he should stop them up because he was on the floor, injured by his own player. No, I don't think he should. Don't think he should. No, 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 no. It was a perfectly good goal for me. No, it's a goal. Like, yeah. It's a goal. But the ref had the decision to stop the match and check up on the play himself. Yeah, but the ref, the, the, choice, the, ref, but the, ref not. the ref made his judgment and so there wasn't enough in it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's not his right, Sophie, and is it it's not the first time that he's done stuff like that. Like, you know, even he looks like he just gets bullied and he's got that reputation where he just needs to toughen up. That's what on, him skinny. He's still skinny. He needs to toughen up. <laughs> No, but in my opinion, can I say something? In my opinion, I thought that um, David De Gea himself should have been a man about it, yeah. I know, I understand the word cold because I'm, I'm laughing right now that it's cold, yeah. You get hit in the shin, yeah, it's cold, ah, it hurts even more, <laughs> and etc. But still, man, still, you have to, you have, you're, you're in the middle of a game. No, this, you have to man. firm that, bro. No, this, you have to, you have to be a man. This, we all firm this, it this, with this, a man's this, ball. It's a man's ball. Man. I hold it down for. Half of you man, you can't do that, you know. Half of you man, you can't do that. We'll be full, rolling on the floor. But yeah, it was cold. Yeah, yeah. We if any of you know, guys, like if any of you guys stepped on my foot on Sunday league and I was rolling around the floor for that long, Sunday league, yeah. That you wouldn't be doing that Sunday league. Yeah, <laughs> but it's guys, it's of course, with David De Gea doing that, Arsenal the goal in the game, Arsenal themselves getting the goal by Smith Rowe, Manchester United coming back, Fred as well making, you know, um, making resentment of, of getting himself back into the game and getting Bruno to equalise. Bruno scoring after a long time in about 15 games. Ronaldo scoring the winner as well, scoring the two goals of Arsenal, scoring so damn easy as well to make it 3 2. The game itself did go, it, it went all right, it went all right, it, it paved way with Michael Carrick as well, stating that he will be leaving. I want to know what your guys' thoughts on Michael Carrick saying that he's gone because Monzi, I want to get your thoughts on it because you have a strong feeling with the whole backroom staff. Because you were going on and on about that. Yeah, Oli's gone, but the rest should go. So what was your thoughts on Carrick resigning? Uh, I was a bit shocked. I don't know why, but I was a bit shocked that he... Because, you know, I don't know why I was shocked, but it just I was shocked that he went. Because he'd done so well. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I have said a lot about the backroom staff, but, you know, I hope they proved me wrong. But, yeah, he did He did show something. I thought he would stay, but I think he... he I think he wanted to stay loyal to Ollie, which is fair enough. If you, you know, if if my mate was in a job and um, someone sacked him for something, I thought that he shouldn't be sacked for. We all know he should have been sacked anyway, but I don't think Carrick thought he should have been sacked. You're gonna go with him, ain't you? So yeah, I was shocked at when it happened. I thought he'd stay on, um, but yeah, I'm not. I didn't lose any sleep over it. <laughs> Neither at all. And. Let's move it up, guys, because, of course, we're 50 minutes deep. Those who are tuning in, make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, remember to share. As well, if you want to contribute to the channel, you can always do that via PayPal and also your Super Chat as well. But, yeah, guys, we have spoken about the Arsenal game. We move along to the main topic, you know, the main event, which is, of course, let me get it straight up to my view. Manchester United won Crystal Paris. Neil Manchester United getting the three points against Paris on Raf Ragnick. Let me get the pronunciation. Raf Ragnick as well. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say with a German accent as well, bro. You're getting his first win with the Gagin Press, you know? The Gagin Press at full effect. And I'm so damn happy to see a difference. And a lot of you guys saw a difference in football in under 45 minutes of training. You're wondering, what can this guy do if he had a whole day? you know, to train these guys, to get into these guys' mind. And he's solved so many problems that our guy, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer himself, had problems that he couldn't solve. He done that within a game that you saw everything just, yeah, it looks like he, the professor will be able to fix it. The surgeon himself, because I've always said, Ralph Bragnett also looks like a surgeon, not just a professor, but he looks like a surgeon. So he's coming to do some surgical work on Manchester United and fix it and bring us balance 
and control, which is, has been a word that's been emphasized so many times coming out from Ralph Ragnar's mouth. Now, guys, I'm going to get the thoughts on of the guys first of all. We're going to start off with you, Pretty Flocker. Before we actually get into the game, I want to know briefly, what's your thoughts on Manchester United's game against Crystal Palace before we get into the actual game itself? That was actually a good watch because obviously Crystal Palace changed the way of playing this season, which we've all known. And seeing us play the way we played against them was, I think, it made me feel good. And one thing that took over like, from 90 minutes, one thing that I actually impressed about was the way we pressed. And like you just mentioned, he took 45 minutes to change that. And of course, we haven't seen that for the past three years. So I think just that for me, it's a big step. The way we press, that changes a whole lot of aspects from the way we perceive how United play. Like not just United fans, but just the media itself. I believe everyone, we should, we should all be on the same page when it comes to that, because that changes was too much. I'm still shocked to see us play that way, though. Yeah, me too. I can agree with you that uh, we're all shocked that, to see that football, because we haven't seen anything. We haven't been nope. treated well. We haven't been looked after well in the last couple of years, nope. man. We haven't got nothing. I'm going to move up to you, Ems. Ems, I want to get your thoughts on the game. Bro, listen, yeah. <sighs> Man, how can you yeah, have about, what, 24 hours or 45 minutes on the grass, yeah? And I saw what I saw. And the previous regime, I'm not going to mention his name because I'm trying to get get out of my mouth as you know three years and i didn't see anything bro that is uh, i feel like i've wasted three years of my life man. i'm never gonna get it back but what i will say i think start of something new man i think we're gonna see fast flowing you know pressing from the front football so for me i feel like i've got i think we've got the players for it as well now like and I think we, I think this might be the end of book a team like a right back fam. You get me? <laughs> so I'm gonna see a footballing fullback. Not book a team, not five times, blah, not five times. <laughs> and I'm gonna spin a Rooney's, bro. So for me, I'm I'm, I'm um I think it's a new era and we're gonna see some exciting football, man. And we've been starved of that, do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. He doesn't want to see. Aaron Wan Bissaka, which I always keep, keep calling Spider Wan, doing any spinner Rooney's. He loves those dandy logs, dandy lang legs. Yeah, Jets, I'm going to move up to you. Yo. What was your thoughts of the game itself? Do you know what? I feel like Crystal Palace made it easy for us to play the way we played because I think Vieira was a bit stubborn with his tactics. He could have played a bit differently. However, what I saw on the weekend was a a breath of fresh air, man. Something different. I love the formation. Um, I'm going to speak more about the fullbacks later, but I think the formation allowed the fullbacks to get forward. And in this day and age, if you want to score goals, the fullbacks need to be involved. So it was good to see Dalot. Even though I still think we need a better right back, it was good to see Dalot play, and he played extremely well, I think. It's peak times for Bazaka at the moment. Definitely peak time. times for one second, like they all say. But you know what? You never know. It might not be peak time. It's good to have these options. Monzi, I'm going to move up to you. Monzi talks. Monzi, man, how, what was your thoughts on the game as well against Palace? Um, yeah, I thought like first half hour was breath of fresh air, so much better. I know people are saying yeah, Palace didn't play great, but we didn't let them play great. You know what I mean? We were pressing, doing you know. To make let them make mistakes. Um, about the fullbacks, I've, I've slated Dallo and Tellez, but they were brilliant. Them two brilliant after re, re uh, for, uh, re-examine what I said about them. But yeah, them balls are crossing him really good. Um, I can't see one was actually getting back in that team, but you never know. He might be uh, doing some more spinner runes in the future. You never know. <laughs> That's all I've got to say, man. I'm going to move it up to you, Jerome. Man. Jerome, what was your thoughts on the game? My thoughts on the game was that there was a very, very positive outlook, the way the team set up. So I'm looking forward to this aggressive front foot football playing style. 
And it was great to see that, especially in the first half, how Ralph was able to implement that with just literally one and a half training sessions. And I think he showed that if you play the players in their right positions, then they can flourish. And we've seen that. Obviously, the guys have been talking about the fullbacks. You've seen if you play them correctly, then you'll see the best out of them. And our midfield was looking good. Literally, the whole setup was just perfect for Palace. And it's, it's exciting times ahead now, because now, we're, from based on that performance, we're, we're looking like we're going to be looking to control games and being able to break down these low blocks that we struggled to do for the last three years. So, it's, yes, it's looking it's looking very positive going forward. And all the players that weren't playing under Oli, you can see that if they're being played correctly, they can show they can show their talent and show what they've got. As you saw, Dallow, as you saw, Tellers. As we saw with Fred, there's so so many players that we haven't even seen their true potential yet. So I'm just I'm just so glad that we've we've got a manager that's gonna be able to to let us see what we haven't been able to see, what we've been starved of, which is good attacking proactive football and not playing scared and nervous and playing with confidence, especially our old traffic where we've been struggling. So yeah, based on that game, yeah, looking forward to What's to come for the rest of the season? Big up to you, man. But which is true, guys. It's, it, it, is, it is what it is, man. We're, we're looking forward to the rest of the season. I have to be honest with you. To see that type of football that come from Ralph Ragnar in 45 minutes. But let's get straight into the game, guys. Because the first 45 minutes was what we want to talk about. That first half at Manchester United, where everything, the first 30 minutes, where everything looked like total football. Manchester United doing it all. Gang impressing 110%. Cutting down, playing on the back, on the front four, making Crystal Palace sweat for the ball as well, and eliminating any threat in the first thirty minutes. Guys, let's look at the first thirty minutes, man. Who wants to go first about the first thirty minutes of Manchester United? The first half. That first forty-five minutes. If you see our average position, I think everyone apart from the gear, and I think it was McTominay, was the average position was in our own half. Everyone else was in the opposition's half for the whole 45 minutes. And if we're going to be playing like that for the rest of the season, then we're going to be scoring a lot of goals and having a lot of possession. So that 45 minutes, that's probably the best I've seen in about 10 years. Even before we had Lou Van Gaal. That, that's, that's how good that first half was. It was just chance after chance. We just always kept winning the ball back in good positions. We were playing for us. We literally, the players are playing like their lives depending on it. They're playing for their careers now. So if we're if we're gonna keep seeing that based on the first, half, yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be lit literally. Like now I can wear my United kit. So, so. <laughs> yeah, as you can see that guys, he's wearing really yeah. his United so, kit, man. Yeah, that's how that's how it's looking right now. <laughs> sorry, yeah, but sorry, but when you say Louis Van Gaal, you got to do it like he says it. Louis Van Gaal, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't miss Louis Van Gaal. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> he was a character. The thing, yeah. the thing, I, the thing I would say though, I think, yeah, that well, like we sustain a touch, we mm-hmm. we lock them in and all of that stuff. But I'm thinking about it now, right? Against better team, if they break, if they beat the press, yeah, we don't have the mobile centre ball well, currently with Victor and the, the fridge at the at the moment at the back, right? So we need we need to play Varan when he's fit, obviously. Oh, when he's fit, obviously, yeah, to to, to you know to cover the space in it that we're gonna leave him behind, in it. But 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 on the positive side, I think you just gotta think though. He has forty five minutes of training, yeah. A man come with them, the, the, the tactics, the shape. And and for once, yeah, we go into a game and we can see some. You can see something. Not no freestyle, bro. Like, mm-hmm. So for us, I just, I, I, I mean, the only way is up for me. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say it again. We have football in full backs, bro. <laughs> football in full backs, bro. You can, you can see, you can see with the way Fred was playing, he wasn't a holding midfielder, was he? It was going forward. I know McTominay was probably, you know, I think Fred and McTominay are similar. I know Fred's probably, Fred at the moment is much better this year, this season, but they're no, too Fred's similar. Better. Fred's 
better. I'll tell you what, Fred has more than twice the touches Tommy has. Nice. Yeah, but they're two the is still hiding. I think, they're too, I think they're too similar. Like, I think Donny Van der Beek would have been better in there. You know, he, he, I know he did come on, but he come on for Bruno. But just playing with that four, four triple, they're calling it four triple two because he played four, two, 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 two. Yeah. And it just like, you could see like a fullback's going forward. And then if they got back, Fred would drop where the fullback was. Or, you know, what I mean, Sancho, Bruno. I thought Sancho was unlucky getting pulled off. What he played right. Rashford, for me, he's gone back to. What he was, um, I slated him. I slated him all the last season. He ain't been great, but might be tired. But yeah, the the first half, apart from Rashford, probably you know they all played really well. Mm-hmm. And um, my, uh, we've got a comment here from Queen that's always drawing on us all the time. That says, "I still believe our dear Oli will come back to lead Man United to victory. The boys are so lost without him, man." As he of course, big up to Queen as always, always trolling on us as well. Man. But yeah, in that first off, of course, guys, it was lovely to see Manchester United because, in my opinion, I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the first forty-five minutes. It got me so excited. It got me off my feet. It got me off my off my chairs at times, looking leaning in towards the TV because I was so involved back then when it was that guy that we must not talk about. I used to just slouch on the right. couch with a screw face, like with a screw face watching it all like in disgust, like. Discuss at the football that I, I am seeing and how many times we're under the cush, but not anymore. I'm, my my ass is at the edge of the seat, looking leaning into the camera like, oh, any goal can come right now. That's yeah. how good the first forty five minutes was, man. Going yeah. into the second half, guys, with Fred eventually getting the goal, which was a brilliant goal <laughs> by Fred. Layup, good, very good layup for Greenwood as well. For me, to get that goal was very important around Fred and his regime because I was so happy. What was your guys' thoughts on Fred's goal as well? Anyone who wants to take the first? Me, yeah. um, it was he, funny, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Let Jake talk. MG, <laughs> you, you're too keen, bro. I was just going to say it was hilarious because when Greenwood laid out for Fred, I was shouting at the TV, Fred, don't, don't shoot. shoot. Please, bro, <laughs> don't shoot. And when he went in, I just couldn't believe it, man. I was so happy for him. And I think that his performance definitely warranted a goal. My only issue with Fred is, can he do this week in, week out? And that's the question I have. I still feel like we need to bring someone in that's a bit better than him so he can have that stiff competition. But with it just being him, Matic and Scott, Running up for defensive mid, I don't think that's enough for us as as United. But M, <coughs> you say? Bro, no, I agree. I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I agree. I think if we get an upgraded um, midfield version of Matt Fred, yeah, then I think we'll be onto something. But um, with Fred, yeah, that goal, yeah, I'm a bit still unsure. Did you mean to shoot or you meant to cross it? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> no, I, no, no, you played it. You placed that in. He meant it, man. He meant it. He's right foot, blood. No, blood. Your friend's got <laughs> two feet, you know. Two feet, feet, blood. <laughs> Chocolate feet, Everyone's got two feet. Everyone's <laughs> got two feet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in football terms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm two no, feet. But yeah, you got but two obviously, feet. <laughs> but obviously, for me, right, I was happy for him because I feel like I know I do this Matt Fred thing. I only do it because it annoys me in it. But I think we need to separate the the Matt Fred in it. It's just Fred and Matt Mayo in it. But like, I just feel like. We gotta give um Freddie's flowers, man, because I feel like he's been criticized heavily, bro. So I think we've got to give him praise when praise is right. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna say this. I was one of Fred's biggest critics with the Met Fred partnership, but now I can see he's actually got grown into his own now. I think he doesn't I think as long as he's not playing with McTominay, I think we'll continue to see a good, consistent Fred throughout the rest of the season. I think it's only a matter of time before. The manager sees that McTominay is not it. And then once we put Fred with other Matic or um, Donny, then we're going to see more consistent performances um, from Fred. And I think he really did mean that with his, with his right foot. I think Ralph's just given him that confidence. And once you've got that confidence, then you can just you can just do anything you feel on the pitch. But when you haven't got that confidence, all of a sudden a 10-yard pass is so difficult and you just miss passes. But now... 
everything's going Fred's way because he's full of confidence and he's been playing since Oli's gone. He's been playing consistent. So long, long may that continue. Um, was, we should have mentioned his name, blood. Don't mention that man's <laughs> name. Trust me, the what pre- is, the trust me. What you will always the be mentioned. You know why? Fans at the stadium have got they're still chanting Oli at the wall when Oli's a legend. He's basically you're never to gonna get rid of Oli. I can tell you that he'll never be in the do background it. somewhere. Oli's name is like Candyman, bro. Uh, it's gonna be ringed out for a very long time. If some of us are even scared to say Oli's name five times, just in case he reappears <laughs> at Manchester United. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The stadium, the, um, Oli a legend or something like that. Yeah, uh, I'll get like, your take guys' thoughts on it, but I'm not going ahead before I move on to the. No, I was literally going to say, like, everything you lost mentioned about Fred. Spice, if you remember, like, when we signed Fred, me and you always saw the way Fred play. We were like, Fred is actually, he would be nice to play with our players, like our midfielders, because he's always behind them, like, always trying to cover them up and that. And I've seen that same old Fred in the past three, four games, and that I'm actually impressed with it. Like, I, I heard him saying, um, give someone his flower but fred been actually poor he's been terrible he deserve whatever whatever they said about them all our players they all deserve it so now they're starting to do well we just hope this continues but he gave he played both the other day and big up to fred i want to see more of that from him i still think he's good because we've been we've we've been criticized a lot just saying fred is good recently we've all been saying fred is dead based on what we've seen in the team itself, not just Fred, everyone else. So good to see like Fred shining. Yeah, yeah. And then let's move up to other players that did really well, of course. Of course, Jace, you mentioned the full backs, you mentioned Tellers and Dalo. I want to get your thoughts on yes. those two guys' performance. Yeah, Dalo, well, for me, the one thing that impressed me the most was the fact that when he was going forward, the, the Crystal Palace full backs weren't sure whether he was going to cut in, go on the outside. Pass the ball, do a trick. Like, he had a bit of variety to his gameplay. If you was to compare him to Aaron Wampazaka, do you get me? So, <laughs> Dalo was in, he had a great game. Again, I'm still concerned that I won't be seeing performances like this from him consistently because I've had Dalo for years and years. We've had him for what five years now, but. <laughs> I'm happy with the performance. Like people have said, let's give everyone a clean slate now with the new gaffer in. Let everyone now perform and let's judge them from what they're doing now. So, so far, so good from Dalo. And Tellez, he was whipping the balls in. He had a uh, free kick that hit the crossbar. He was just doing everything well going forward. And that's what we need, man. I'm tired of watching Man City and Liverpool and watching their fullbacks do their thing. Do you get me? So the fullbacks, especially with that formation, Absolutely crucial to our to our team, and I think they've done well. Still, they've done well. They got to Yaya who says, "How could anyone play well under the under whose name we shouldn't mention?" Obviously, Lord Voldemort. We should have never mention his name in this channel anymore, man. But Donna, we've been trying. We've broken up with him, and people still writing articles on him on how X, Y, and Z, how he done this, how he gave his money to charity. I don't give a shit, bro. Why didn't you give it to me? That's why I don't give a shit. Exactly. <laughs> them, them, them lonely nights. You owe us fans your compensation because you gave us the hard times out here, man. And Pay our subscription money. fees. You know, time is something that you can't get back because well, you can't get a refund on time. Nah. But again, another player did his thing. The defense, as you mentioned, Dalo and what's called Lindelof had a good game. Very yeah. aggressive on the on the back foot as well with putting a lot of pressure and passing the ball, guys. Um, I'm going to bring it up to you, Jerome, and you let me know as well who else impressed you in that game. Yeah, obviously the fullbacks impressed me. I would say our attacking players did okay. I'd say in the first half, it was a bit faded in the second half. I think because the, the, the team tied out because obviously they're not, they're not quite used to this whole pressing system yet, but they were in due course, but yeah, definitely in the first half, the attacking players interchanging at the front. Bruno was getting involved, Rashford was using his pace. Obviously, he's still in his work his end product, but it was good to see fast flowing, interchanging, and players like moving positions and stuff. And you know, just making giving the Crystal Palace some, something to think about. So, yeah, I think apart from obviously the full backs, 
I was impressed with our attacking players as well. They were playing like they wanted to cement their place in the team. So, yeah, it was positive. I think all that was missing was scoring more goals. So, hopefully, we can get Marshall coming back fit. And then, obviously, Cavani. So, we've got, we've got a lot of attacking players that, that could actually do well in this new system. So, yeah, it's looking promising for the forwards right now. And Munzi, what about you? Who else impressed you? What about Ronaldo? He's pressing because our gaffer said that huh, he's he, in terms of pressing, he's doing the bits. Yeah, um, I just think he played much better because of the win backs were getting him crosses in. Do you know what I mean? With the crosses coming in, he you know, he needs to score from the penalty spot of a header. Do you know what I mean? If he didn't hit that right, it'd have been straight in. But I just think like, the first half hour of it, everyone, apart from Rashford, probably, but. You know they all played well, but yeah, Ronaldo looked different. He was pressing and everything. He can he can press. It's just whether he wants to or not. And yeah, no, he, did, he didn't seem to want to under Oli. Do you know what no, I mean? So yeah. Well, you know, do you know what? In my opinion, he can press because the way Manchester United are pressing now under the guy can press is in zone. They're pressing in zone and togetherness. One one person goes for the ball, the other one absolutely gets out the, the guys the other players they follow so they're all pressing his own whereas ollie he was chasing lost balls lost causes and loss of everything you know so yeah you will look like you're, you will not look like he can't be bothered to press he won't look like it because it's just there's no point of pressing that when he was under ollie because you're just under the cush cush all the time um Brother, the player, well, go on, I'm no, gonna say, how you gonna, how you gonna press without a system you can't so you know what you know what it is if you're just pressing for the sake of pressing you're just going to get yourself tired tired that's what bruno and rashford yeah. they, they're pressing for the sake of pressing and they're running chasing shadows and all of a sudden they just stop and they see like oh, this can't be bothered they look you know like, it looks like they're not tracking no. back Don't Don't get get it. It. i like the work rate right, but it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense though but i do appreciate the work rate when i see bruno running down after the ball and no one else is following him. I appreciate the work rate, but it doesn't make sense. The management needs to get involved and make sure the team does it together. And we saw that against Crystal Palace. So, yeah, uh, Guys, let's move on to the next part. I want to I wanna get you guys as man of the match and your, your donkey of the match. I'm going to start it off first because my man of the match was Fred for getting that goal. I know other players did well. Dalo did well as well. People can say he's in contention. For man in the match, but in my opinion, it, it, I would have to give it to Fred, man, for everything that he's done throughout the last couple of games. But the get the winning goal was one of the reasons why. But don't give the match again two games in a row against Arsenal and also against Palace. It's got to be Marcus Rashford. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm going too far with this, but I'm, I'm, I'm worried about Rashford. Like I'm worried about his future, you know, because what I'm seeing from Rashford is a player again. That hasn't been coached or mentored in the right way. Every he's still a raw talent, but he gets the numbers. But his performance has been abysmal. I know it's been a while since he's been playing games um regularly, but God man, Rashford did offer nothing against Arsenal. He offered nothing. It's maybe because he got the assist. Apart from that, he still didn't offer anything. He didn't offer anything against Palace as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Raf will do with these players, these young bucks. Because Rashford needs education. As old as he is, he's probably 23, 24. But I still see him as an 18-year-old. Because the way he plays football is like an 18-year-old. That's why he's my donkey of the match. And we'll move it up to you, Jax. Who's your man of the match and who's your donkey of the match? Um, it has to go to Fred, most definitely. You know, he's picked up his performances over the last couple of two, three games. So I'm definitely giving it to Fred. Um, and for me personally, I hear what you're saying about Rashford. Um, but I'm not surprised. He is inconsistent with his performances, unfortunately. So I'm hoping that he'll run into a good vein of form very shortly with the run-up of games that we have. But I'm giving it to De Gea for that nonsense he did on the floor, man. <laughs> he, he has to be dunking because he could have stopped that goal going in, even if he was holding one leg and then save it with another hand. What yeah. game are you talking about? Are you talking about Palace? Are you talking about, <laughs> talking about a different game, Blood? No, uh, that Arsenal, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For the Palace game. Um... 
he was donkey for the Palace game. Yeah, I give it to Rashford then. Yeah. <laughs> I give it to Rashford still. What's your, what about you? Who was your man of the match and who was your donkey of the match? Uh, man of the match, uh, definitely Fred. It was all over the place, wasn't he, really? Um, in a good way, in a good way. Um, well, I'm just back on the Rashford brigade, you know what I mean? Rashford again. Just, I don't know what's going on with him, but hopefully Rania can grab hold of him and start coaching him. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, he wasn't great, Rashford. But, you know, first half, first half hour he was all right, but then he just, you know, I don't know what's the matter with him. He, look, he looks like he was injured again, but he can't be injured again. Do you know what I mean? Is he, has Oli rush, did Oli rush him back? You never know, do you? He, you know, he didn't. He did come back earlier than he should have, so he might be rushed back. You never know, but hopefully he'll, he'll buck his ideas up because, you know, the old Rashford, we need the old Rashford back. You know, he's definitely a plus for us. And what about you, Jerome? Who was your man in the match and who was your donkey of the match in that game against Palace? It was a toss-up between Dallow and Fred, but I'll have to give it to Fred. Simply because he's if he didn't score that goal, it would have probably been a nil-nil. So I'll have to give it to him. And I liked his all action style. As Munji said, he was everywhere, literally. So he looks like he's growing into his own now. And he's expect more good things to come from Fred. Don't care the match. I'll have to give it to Rashford. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to give him this last chance. If he can't develop his game under Ragnick, then I think he's probably going to have to leave. Because, like you guys said, how long has he been at United now? Um, we just seen the same Rashford every single year. We can't blame all the previous managers that he's been under so that they haven't developed him because he, he needs to take some orange of himself. It's not like he's a baby. So, and Oli's a stri- Oli was a striker and I'm pretty sure Oli would have worked on striker stuff in training. I know Oli was useless, but he can't have been totally useless. So, that's the only reason why I'm going to say Let's just give Rashford this last chance under this new regime. And if he still can't cut it, then we've just got to cut our losses. Because we've seen too many poor performances from him since he's come back. Scoring odd goals here and there is not, it's not enough for these these weird performances and just just running into no man's land and always losing the ball in silly positions. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Good shout. And last, good shout. Last one, we shout needs to go before him, though, but good shout. I hear that. And Evans, <laughs> what about you? Who was your man in the match? Blood, don't the match? My, my brother, that's brown. Diogo Dalo, blood. I don't care, fam. I find you a bit wicked with some quality, bro. Quality in the right of that. Bro, you know, you, bro, you can't underestimate that, blood. You may think I'm picking on Booker T, but I'm not. The fact is, I'm seeing attacking fullback. I ain't seen that since Bobby Gary Neville days, no Raphael days, sorry. But, um, um, my, my, my donkey, bro, Darren Fletcher, bro. What, what, what is this, bro? Do you see anyone technical director on the touchline, bro? Do you <laughs> see that? Nah, bro. What is that? What, what is that? Nah, man. I'm not having that. What is that? No, but serious. Do you see? I've heard. He's tra- he was wearing a tracksuit as well, isn't it? I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. Sources, sources tell me that. He's uh, ordering the McDonald's for half time. That's why he's got his finger. Grab the headphones, bro. Like, nah, I'm not having that. Who technical directors chilling on the on the sideline? Do you see Marina? Really, he's trying to suck up to to Ralph, isn't it? He wants to. He wants to. You know, he wants to stay at the club because he knows. What's the idea? He wants to learn. Learn. He's he's Absolutely, but big ups to Fred, who got the majority of the votes for the match. Who, who his stats on the day was ninety five total touches, eighty three percent pass accuracy, sixteen total duels contested, ten total duels won, ten passes into the final third, nine attempts tackled, seven successful tackles, seven ball recoveries, two clearances, two shots, and a goal. The amount of statistics that came out of this guy on that day is amazing. I wonder what McTominay did. Because I I can imagine his statistic was dead. Another guy that did well was Diego Dallo, which was Ems's man of the where match. Is, where is my man of the ma- where is my man of the match? Oh, oh shit! The match? Did, did you not get to that? Oh, who was your man of the match and don't get the match? Thank you. Sometimes you need to call it out because sometimes I could forget. <laughs> nah, no, I know you did forget. Your oh, host, host. I'll go for I'm with Ems though. 
Now with MZ with the donkey of the match thing, mm -hmm. we don't. If you go play your role, we've seen that already in the past history. This back, this back of house stuff needs to stop. You know, in the pitch, it really needs to stop. No, it's getting ridiculous. We got back of the house and the on the pitch with Darren Fletcher. So I don't know. Right, what you're come on, about. we need to stop this. You know, it's it really needs to stop. And let me just say, obviously my player of the match would be Fred, but I was gonna say Lindelof though because I was impressed with his defensive people. I think he was people to really see what he did yesterday, but he was he defended very, very good. And guys, I think everyone's been too harsh on Rashford. You know. He just came back from injury. Yeah, Oli forced, Oli, Oli forced him to get injured, but I believe everyone's getting too harsh on Rashford. Rashford being one of the saviors throughout all his different managers. They just remember that, I agree, though. I agree, I agree. And, and of course, let me say exactly Diego Delo's statistics as you guys, two of you guys have selected David. De, I mean, Diego Delo as your man in the match. Is it? It's just only by coincidence that I got it in advance. I never thought that you guys would go with these guys. But yes, Diego Dalos um, versus Crystal Palace, 88% pass accuracy, 11 attempts, long passes, which, which were, of course, my guy, you Ems. know, M's Booker T cannot do 11 attempts, long passes, nine successful, long passes, six ball recoveries, four attempts, tackles, three successful tackles, three attempts, attempted crosses, of course. I didn't think that on the word crosses, two successful crosses. You know, and one interception. Big up to Diego Delo that done extremely well. Now let's move it up to, of course, the manager's quotes, the players' quotes, and of course the media's reaction quotes, which we'll get started off with. First of all, let me big up, um, of course, um, Football Capital is, is who is um, locked in. He says Eric Ten Hag will be the next. Big up to you. I also said, remember, Fred is Brazilian, which is true. Fred is Brazilian. And, and this guy made us question Fred's nationality. And that's the reason why Fred has had enough, you know, of, of the previous <laughs> regime. Now, on the Ralph, we're like, oh, yeah, I can see that he's Brazilian. I can see a little oh, he bit. Couldn't make, he couldn't make 10 yard pass. <laughs> Everyone's closer to him now. But big up to Ralph, who spoke regarding the game. He said, Ralph Ragnick said that. Of course, first of all, let's get some statistics out of the way. Ralph Ragnar is the first of six German managers in the Premier League to win the first his first game in the competition after Felix Magath, Jürgen Klopp, Jan Stuart, Daniel Farco, and Thomas Tuchel all failed to do so before him. But he happened to get his victory on his first attempt compared to the previous. Um, before we go on to Ralph, we spoke about Bruno as Bruno spoke after the game saying stuff like this. Bruno talked about the first 25 minutes was unbelievable. Great tempo. We could have scored so many in the first half. We have to follow our new manager's instruction. Now we go again to Champions League. You see, the most key part, we said that we have to follow our new manager's instruction. Our new manager has instructions. The previous manager never had instruction. It's um, just go out there. On the <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants it more. <laughs> but, but, but these guys had instructions to carry out, you know, on the field. Bruno Fernandes also said that we had to carry on with what we did from last game against Arsenal. Sorry, guys. Let me just get this out the way. I hate when... You know what pisses me? I'm trying to get this. My phone? Yeah. Thank you, God. Sorry about this, guys. Um, yes, Bruno said that we had to carry on with what we did the last game against Arsenal. We were happy because we got the threat that we wanted. Bruno also said that regarding Fred, he said that Fred has had these moments one shot per year. Everyone is happy for him because he's a, such a nice guy. He worked a lot and people don't talk about him. He deserves the praise, which is true. The, um, Fred himself does deserve some praise because he's been going through a lot of criticism, guys. And what did you guys thought about that quickly? I'm going to get Jax's thoughts before I continue reading. What did you? What's your thoughts on Bruno's um, comments on Fred? It's needed. Of course, you need the players to have some sort of camaraderie and to boost each other up. But like my boy Amok said earlier in the show, Fred was shit before. He was playing shit and we're always going to call out what we see. Like, don't... I don't want I don't want to say that anyone in our team is playing poorly, but if we see it, we see it. So now that he's playing well, of course he's gonna get his praises, you know. Like I said, I just hope he continues. But 
it's good for Bruno to boost him up as well because Fred needs every every bit of confidence that he's getting at the moment still. So yeah, good words for Bruno. Potential. Big up, Bruno. Big up to Bruno as well. Bruno also says that I think it depends on the game. Sometimes you have to press more, sometimes less. But everyone knows the manager wants more pressing from us. You see, everyone see hear that. Hear that. But everyone knows the manager wants more pressing from us. See that the manager has a reputation that he wants you men to press before you even got there. With the other guy that we shouldn't name, is express yourself. You know, it's always express yourself. We know that our the manager that we have reviews, he will allow us to do whatever we want. So we're gonna do whatever we want. Bring up to bring up to Ralph Ragnett who spoke after the game. He said I had to ask my assistant coach if that was Fred's right foot. I thought he could only shoot with his left. I'm happy for him. Um, he, he also said that the way we defended, we had to control of the whole game. The clean sheet was the most important part. And again, I keep saying again, it's the most important part. We had control of the whole game. And this is something that we haven't had in a long time. Raf Nick also said that these are the things we must improve on. We need to keep clean sheets. With just one training session, I was really impressed. We did better than expected. Racknett also said, I am very happy with the way the team performed, especially in the first half an hour with the pressing. It was exceptional. The only thing missing was 1-0 or 2-0. He also said that we, we always tried to be on the front foot. We were never no, no apart from maybe the last five minutes at all. At all the other times, we were trying to keep them away from our goal. Um, it's exactly said, he, what the most important thing that we always tried to be on the front foot and he actually did that. We played on the front foot compared to what we was before. Our previous ex-manager, he said that we mentioned that it's about being on the front foot, but never actually doing it, you know, you know, never just talking to talk, but never walks to walk. But this guy talks to talk any hope. Hopefully he walks to walk, you know. It's only one game, we're getting carried away. And another one thing that I like to say, guys, which I want to throw on to you. Manchester United made 77 passes into the final third against Crystal Palace. The most United have managed in a Premier League game this season. Jerome, what do you have to say about that quickly? What I have to say is that is what we call impressive stats. And what a club of our stature, the players that we've bought, the money spent, should be doing week in, week out. So I'm glad that it looks like, it looks like we're on our way back to where the standards should be. Because under the previous regime, the standards were lowered and mediocre performances were being praised. Now, we look like we're on our way back to where we should be. So we're quite happy with those impressive stats because it shows that we're being proactive, playing on the front foot. And as the manager continually says, we want to keep controlling games and dominating possession. <laughs> because the football captain says that Oli was telling them to press as well. Express yourself. But yo, Ems, I don't know if that was a real laugh, but that one was a bit too much. But yes, Ragnar also said, I must admit, I was surprised by the Man United performance. I was a bit surprised because not only we did play on Thursday, a late kickoff, we had two days less to recover compared to Crystal Palace. He said that we had not even a full training session yesterday because it was 40, 45 minutes. It was pouring. It was not just Manchester United weather. It was disgusting. It was heavy, rainy, windy. So it was almost impossible to train in a concentrated and focused manner, which they eventually did do that. Um, I'm going to move it up to to Ragnick because he's, he did spoke, speak a lot. He spoke about Mason Greenwood as well um, coming on. But to end that with that, guys, what was your guys' thoughts on? And I'm very sure you guys watched Ralph Ragnar's press conference, um, post post match analysis. What do you guys gather up on Ralph Ragnar the way he handles the media? I'm gonna start it off with actually not guys. Um, anyone can come in real way. Um, I'd like to just quickly point out that I'm quite satisfied with the level of detail he's given us. As a Man United fan, what was lacking before was his, was what exactly we was going to do, how we was going to do it, you know, the system we was going to use, the system we was going to implement. And the gap has given, given that to us straight away. The level of detail is has been very good from him. 
And yeah, I rate him so far, man. Obviously, it's only one game, but so far, so good. You know what? I'm not even, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I was, was, was going to say that. Do you want I was going to say that. I'm actually looking forward to Yao's press conferences now. On the previous regime, I just didn't care. I just got notifications <laughs> on the phone. Little quotes here and there. Blame me, my brother. And get, get on the end of things. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now as Jake said, we're actually getting proper detail. How we want to play. How the performance was. What he expects from his players. What the targets are. Like, these are stuff that fans want to know. Not buzzwords and words that don't mean anything. He's actually <laughs> talking with conviction and intelligence, and he comes across as buzzwords. <laughs> even, even, even though, <laughs> even though Wait, are you man strolling? Are you man strolling the other manager though? Because I know you know that's his name. This is a big buzzwords. troll, you know. <laughs> you know buzzwords. Even, 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 even though English is not. Yao's first language, mm -hmm. he actually comes across very well and articulates himself well. Uh, and that gives the fans confidence that he, he knows speaks English way better than me, way better than Munzi. He, he, he studied in the dad, UK. Munzi's forefathers. His He's English a is just professor. Mm -hmm. And all now, like, everything you lot just mentioned it just comes to one thing: professionalism. When you take everything into the, its aspect, you get to do it the way it should get done. But if you take in certain opportunity. You want to be friendly about certain things because you don't know what you got to do. You got to be nice to people because that's what I saw the last regime, and that's why it's so clear and vivid for all fans to just, just see the contract between these two managers. It's just there. Just after one game, everyone can literally tell the difference. Like you giving out your information, how you want things to get done. You know when you just strategize everything and your delivery is good with it and like i remember I tell, i'm telling um, i was saying to spies the other day i said but these germans in the english do it articulate themselves i love it like yeah. it, like i really do like it i just like the german mentality german philosophy i grew up with that mentality if you know me you know me so for me this is a plus a big big plus for us go on ems quickly go on, ems before we no, end I, 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 for, for, for me right Bro, I'm excited to watch, bro. Other than when when a journalist is asking the previous regime, what's your philosophy? And man said, I'm not a philosopher. <laughs> and it's all about the simple game and all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. At least Ragnik here, yeah. man goes into the depth, bro. He sits down, everyone listens, head up, like in the lecture. And man goes into the lecture. Good you know boy, it's a simple thing. We've <laughs> got our notepad and pen out. Just <laughs> even me, bro. <laughs> I have my notepad and pen out when I'm watching a match to take notes of the professors the way he yeah. does <laughs> But he ain't saying football is an easy thing, though. He ain't saying that word at all. Football ain't no easy thing. He's not saying it. He's just telling you how it gets to be done. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, guys. Um, In terms of news today regarding Ralph Ragnar and his staff, we have been informed that um, a lot of reports are coming out that Ralph Ragnar will be hiring an assistant manager Apparently, the former New York Red Bulls head coach Chris Armand will join Ralph Ragnick. Staff announced it will be in the next few in the next few days, which was reported by United Reports and also Tyler Tellem as well. And um, there was also news that Chris Armand would also pick up one of will be one of his four appointments in the back room. There's also a source that Manchester United are also looking at a psychologist, a sports psychologist. Sasha Lenz is set to become Ragnick's second staff appointment. He's visited Carrington today, which was which was introduced to the players, but he will not start work obviously because of the work visa. And 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 and, and again, I would like to commend Manchester for getting a sports psychologist because the what these men have gone through in the last couple of years under this ex manager, Trust certain me. men were crying at night times, questioning whether they're good at football. You know, <laughs> depressed and shit, and no one to talk to about it. You know, I'm telling you that right now. They got the, the pillows. They the media, they were crying and dying. So I'm glad they got the school psychologist so they can go to them and speak to them and let everything out. You know, <laughs> let, let it That's all out shout, so they can man. improve. So good shout, man. A big up for um Ralph Ragnar, who always thinks about the best thing is to get into the player's mind and brain. And now the and club if is you can get into the player's mind and brain, you get the best out of them. You get more than 110. You can probably get 140% out of them because you're already you're in their mind now. You're fucking with their mind. It's like when you fuck with a woman's wife, you can do whatever she could. You can make her do whatever you wanted to do. It is what it is if you're if you're good. 
at what you do. <laughs> Not for everyone. If you're only if you're good at what you do, guys. So guys, that was advice for I like you guys that deep talk there. To get women. Came from, you came yes. to the camera, touch yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, guys. Well, big up to you guys who are tuning in as well. That we have come to the end of the show. No, it's M's had to shoot off, which is which he did say. But we have come to the end of the show. We'd like to thank you for watching, for, for tuning in as well. It's been a great show. Manchester United are under a new regime under Ralph Fragment. But this is the part where I plug in the guys and they can tell you where you can find them. I'm going to start off with Futuro. Where can the people find you? Yeah, they can find me on Instagram on the username jwilliams underscore one. And, and, oh, but, and pretty flock up. Okay, um, where can the people find you? You always find me here every Monday and on Instagram, pretty flock <coughs> underscore 16. And Jets? Where can the people find you, my friend? Uh, Insta, Jex underscore United. <clears throat> and Monzi, where can they find you and where can they subscribe to? Yeah, you can find me on my channel, at Monzi Talks, on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. And you can also find me on here every Monday. Yes, and that is every Monday. Guys, of course, you can follow M's which, on Twitter, which is M's. Done. Dumbs, you know, and dumbs, you know. But of course, you can always find me here every Monday hosting your show with the co host with the rest of the gang, the Man United, the Red United TV gang, the Man United gang. And of course, your live match reaction, which will be on Wednesday, 20 30 minutes after the final whistle. And as well on Saturday, when we play, I believe, I can't remember who we're playing, but we're going to move their asses. Norwich, a guaranteed three pointer. You'll get your match reaction. Of course, watch out for the live news as well. Make sure you press your notification up so whenever I go live, you get notified. You can tune in straight away. So for those who also want to contribute to the channel, remember you can always contribute to the channel by the link description if you have PayPal or join us on a live chat. And you can always send us via super chat, which of course helps improve the channel, the quality content, such as the new gear, new camera, whichever, whatever I can think of that can improve the content of this channel, I will do you reinvest the money into it. But guys, remember to follow me on my official Instagram account, which is I've written on the school spice, same as the Twitter, and remember to follow the official Instagram account, Ready Night TV, which is Ready Night TV one. And remember to follow the Twitch account, which is Ready Night TV, and also the TikTok, which is Ready Night TV. As always, my ladies, remember to subscribe, remember to share, remember to share to your ex-boyfriend, your current boyfriends as well. Remember to share to that guy that's been trying to have sex with you from work and you always buying you food. Remember to share to him as well. And of course, remember to share to the guy that's been trying to get your number for all that damn time and you've been saying no to him. And also the guys, your dad's friends that's been looking at you up and down. Remember to share them to them perverts right there. As always, guys, remember to keep it united. Remember to keep it red united. We are out. We have enjoyed ourselves. We will see you next week. Peace out. As always, peace. You get me? Ollie out. <laughs> Ollie is the Monse, why are we still talking about him, though? <laughs> <laughs> He's gone now.